an introduction to a brief history of distance learning. Distance learning has been around for a long time in many different guises, every era taking advantage of the technology of the time to make learning more and more accessible. As early as 1728, Caleb Phillips advertised private correspondence courses in the Boston Gazette. In the late 1700s into the 1800s, there were correspondence courses that allowed people to learn all manner of things via the mail. In 1840, Sir Isaac Pittman launched his correspondence courses in shorthand, enabling secretaries to learn via the mail by sending in their work for grading and correction. In 1892, the University of Chicago created the first college-level distance learning program. In the 1920s, Penn State and other colleges began offering courses through the radio. By 1925, over 200 colleges and universities had been granted radio broadcasting licenses. The 40s, 50s, and 60s saw expansion of the use of radio, television, and the telephone in distance learning. John Wilkinson Taylor partnered with NBC in 1948 to provide college by radio. The University of Houston offered the first televised college accredited classes in 1965. Also in 1965, the first statewide telephone-based education program was offered by the University of Wisconsin. The establishment of the Internet, then known as ARPANET, in 1969 by the U.S. Department of Defense laid the foundations of the coming explosion of distance learning. Some highlights of the era of Internet distance learning. The University of Phoenix is founded in 1976 to provide adults more flexible higher education options. In 1992, the Electronic University Network offered a PhD program via the rising online platform America Online. Western Governors University was founded in 1997 by 19 U.S. governors to help facilitate distance learning for their rapidly growing populations. As the explosion of online opportunities continued, 1999 saw the introduction of new educational software tools, such as Blackboard and Desire to Learn, followed by Moodle in 2002. By 2003, 81% of colleges had at least one online course offering. Between 2002 and 2008, the number of students in online classes increased 187%. With the emergence of Khan Academy in 2008 and edX, which launched in 2012, distance learning students had become a significant proportion of all higher education students. In 2010, 83% of CEOs and small business owners in the United States considered online degrees to be as credible as traditional degrees. Which brings us to the present. According to Inside Higher Education, between 2016 and 2017, the number of students who took at least some courses online grew by 5.7% despite declining enrollments overall. The percentage of all students who were enrolled in exclusively online programs grew to 15.4% or about 1 in 6 students. We hope you enjoy this brief history of distance learning video. Thanks for watching.